more I do this, I feel like it's more complex than like I originally thought. And like, it's difficult to truly explain everything accurate. Do you feel like you're getting an understanding of what's going on at all? Or do you feel like you're not even close and you need a lot more sessions? Well, I, I think we're getting in, I think you, I, I think that I think, I think you're getting a clear understanding of what's going on in your experience. And that may be for me more interesting than what your experience is. And I'm not, I'm not actually hundred percent sure why I think that's interesting, but I do think that's interesting and valuable for people to, to apprehend their own inner experience in what we call high fidelity. And so, for example, it seems to me we're doing a pretty good job of distinguishing between I'm feeling the radiant heat of the sun and I'm thinking, oh, that's the sun. Your experience was of feeling the radiant heat and not of thinking, oh, that's the sun on my arm. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think we're, we are refining our communication about that. And for reasons which is not entirely clear to me, I think that is a valuable exercise. I, for me to do it and for you to do it and for Alec to do it too, but she can speak mm -hmm. for herself. It is sort of therapeutic in a way. I don't know if anyone else has told you guys that, but. It makes sense, right? Like if so much of what goes wrong psychologically is like a disconnect with reality, like think about schizophrenia, that's what that is. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to compare you to someone with schizophrenia, but to get right about reality, to get closer to reality seems like a pretty therapeutic, healthy thing to do. I would say our average participant says this was therapeutic. And and some people would say I've had years and years of therapy and I've gotten more out of this talking about 34 beeps than I have out of, you know, however many years of experience. And that's something that's, there's something remarkable about that. And, and there's also something that's not particularly surprising about that because I think we, the three of us together, are trying to get a few glimpses of Ryan's experience the way Ryan's experience actually is, as best as, or actually is, might be a little strong, but a high fidelity, high fidelity glimpses of Ryan's experience. Yeah, I'm trying and, to do my best I can to actually, like, genuinely give as much detail as I possibly could, because I feel like I could easily just be vague and avoid the questions, but, I, like. I think that's pretty good. My best. But but what I would say is I think that's I think it's therapeutic for Ryan to know what's going on in his experience, and it's therapeutic for Russ to know what's going on, or it's therapeutic for Russ to try to grasp what's going on in Ryan's experience. Yeah. Those two things are fulfilling. Par parallel values, yeah. it seems to me. Totally. Agree. Because it it breaks it breaks me out of my biases and and whatever i mean it, it people people including me are are blind to the way the world is you, you look around you you can see a whole lot of blindness going on in, in the world and this is a this is an exercise in not being blind to what is actually going on either with you for you or with you for us and all that stuff is about you now from doing this for so long and talking to so many people and seeing so many different like possibilities of how people could think, has this affected your personal relationships or anything at all? Like when you meet someone, does it affect how you interact with them? I'm sure the answer is yes. I don't think about it very often. Like if I'm not experience sampling, I'm not in the experience sampling business. But I would say people who know me pretty well think I'm always in the experience sampling business. And uh, but you know, I, I would probably be the last person to notice notice that. I'm sure I'm sure it's affected me in the sense that I, when people say things to me, I'm interested in what they actually mean. And sometimes I ask them, and sometimes I let it slide in the you know in the non sampling world. But I'm sure that pisses some people off that I let it slide and other people off that I did that I asked too much mm -hmm. so you it, the world is a complicated place but, but I'm you know I, I I am genuinely interested in what 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 the world is like from a point of view other than mine what about you Alec same I think 
the the most I know of how it has changed me is well, I know some things, but my husband will point out that I'm pretty skeptical of most things people say about themselves or their theories and I tend to write them off and it consistently drives him crazy and I just kind of think I don't I don't know. I've seen a lot of people who had a lot of theories and um so I think it it cultivates a little skepticism in me, but a healthy kind, not a outright kind. Healthy depends on who you ask. Yeah, that's right. I, I want it to be. <laughs> well, we th this whole exercise started with Ryan saying, I have constant chatter in my head, constant internal monologue in my head. And we have seen precious little of that, actually. We have we have seen Ryan speaking. But it, but I would say that it was quite different from the way he characterized it in the, at the outset, at least as it as it seemed to me. Mm -hmm. And and you know that's the kind of thing that makes you makes Alec skeptical of what people say about themselves because people have are have mistaken views of of what they actually do and and we have, we encounter that. I would say more than routinely. I would say most most of the time we encounter that. I would be genuinely interested to see what the girl I interviewed would get out of this because I I still think about that and I'm like is she actually have does she have an accurate assessment of what's going on or does she genuinely not have vocal thoughts and she said am I remember right that she had sort of no verbal nothing. experience nothing no words that kind of thing nothing at all but she couldn't even force it if she wanted to. That would be interesting. And so, I would add that it's been cool to learn about you that like if monologue is, I know it's not the same as like narration, but when people talk about internal monologue, at least like what I'm seeing now on the internet, it kind of seems like they're referring almost like an internal narrator. Yeah. Like, not like uh, a true monologue, like a Saturday Night Live monologue, but yeah, like yeah. this running narration. At times it seems like you almost have that with images. That's a, that's a really strong statement, but you will often have an image to sort of populate or illustrate like what you're dealing with or what you're planning to do or whatever. And that's that's not true of everyone. And that's pretty interesting and, and potentially very valuable for you to know about yourself. I don't know how, but it might be. Yeah, it's one thing that I, I've learned from doing this is like almost every single beef, there's a visual attached to like whatever's happening. And I do have a lot of verbal stuff going on, but those verbal things are also connected, like they're associated with visual stuff. So I, 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 what I remember about the interview is with the girl that she was confident and I discount confidence. And I remember, well, you know, she could be like that or not. We, we sample with a lot of people have no, who never have an inner speaking of any kind and never have words of any kind. So that is not at all a surprising deal so she, so she could be absolutely correct about that yeah. and and it could be that she is correct in that detail and incorrect about the rest of her experience mm -hmm. i think you, people just don't know until they until they go through this kind of or some kind of an exercise that would that would allow them to figure it out have you guys ever thought about monetizing this experience i've thought about it some but i I don't think about it much. I'm a university professor. I'm, I'm, I'm given, I'm, I'm paid by the state to try to speak the truth about things. So I take that, I take that pretty seriously, maybe too seriously or whatever. I don't know, but, the, but it would, money screws things up, I would say. I do see value in what you're doing though. So. I appreciate what you do, and I'm sure a bunch of other people do as well. Well, I, th I think I think this series of stuff is gonna gonna make make people think about it. I hope so. Absolutely.